Hello, today we're going to talk about logarithmic differentiation. Remember that there are two types of differentiation we've talked about so far. One is explicit differentiation, where I have y is equal to a function of x, and that's kind of like normal derivatives. The second is implicit differentiation, which we did a few videos ago. And that's where I don't explicitly have y as a function of x, and a different method is required to find the derivative. There's a third type called logarithmic differentiation, and that's what we're going to do today. Here's a function that, surprisingly, we don't know how to take the derivative of yet. x raised to the power of cosine of x. x to the cosine of x power. That's a function that actually we don't know how to take the derivative of yet. It's not a power function. It's also not an exponent function. A power function has the form of x and a number up in the exponent, like x squared, x cubed, x to the one third, even x to the pi, because pi is a number, 3.14, etc. Anything that looks like x with a number in the exponent is called a power function. On the other hand, exponential functions have a number in the base and x up in the exponent. That would be like 2 to the x, 3 to the x, e to the x, because e is just the number 2.71, etc. So a power function has x in the base and a number as the exponent. An exponential function has a number in the base and an x up in the exponent. They're kind of like opposites of each other. Now the function x in the base with cosine of x in the exponent, that is neither a power function, so I can't use the power rule to take the derivative. It's also not an exponential function, so I can't use derivatives of exponentials that we covered a couple of classes ago. It turns out the right method to take the derivative of a function like this is to use something called logarithmic differentiation. So step number one is going to be to take the logarithm of both sides of the equations and then use the logarithm rules to simplify the expression and then use implicit differentiation after that. So let's examine functions of the form format f of x raised to the power of g of x. And I'll show you a method for finding dy dx. This method is called logarithmic differentiation. The first step is to take ln of both sides of the function. Now it's true that I could use some sort of log base 10 or log base 2, but I'm going to use log base e just because it's a little bit easier. So the ln means log base e. Logarithm has nice properties. ln of a to the b power is equal to b times ln of a. What this property does is it takes a base raised to some power and turns it into multiplication involving the ln function. That's going to be advantageous for us. So on the right hand side, let's bring that g of x down in front as a multiplier and I'll be left with ln of f of x. The next step is to use implicit differentiation. Now I've got ln of y of x on the left and a product on the right, taking the derivative with respect to x on both sides and assuming that y is a function of x, you can see that on the left side I'm going to have a chain rule. Derivative of the outside function is 1 over y times the derivative of the inside function which is y prime of x. And now let's do the product rule on the right side. The derivative of g times the ln of f of x plus g. And then the derivative of the outside function for the ln is 1 over f and then multiply times f prime. The final step in implicit differentiation is to solve for y prime. Here on the left I almost have y prime except I have this extra 1 over y that came from the ln. So let's multiply times y on both sides. Now this is an expression for the derivative. Let's look at the overall process here. We started with a function of x where we have f of x to the g of x power, took the log of both sides, use properties of logs, then use implicit differentiation. By the time we get to the final answer, we have y in our solution and also a bunch of stuff depending on x. So the final step is to use our function and we're going to replace this y with a function of x. The way I like to think about it is that if someone gives you a function of x, then your answer for the derivative should be a function of x. So right where there's this y, I'm going to replace it with f of x to the g of x power. So this is the process that you're going to do for any given problem. And our final answer, of course, gives us slopes of tangent lines 
on the original function. Let's try our x to the cosine of x example. The first step is to take the ln of both sides. Now I'm going to use properties of log in order to simplify. I'll bring the cosine of x down in front as a multiplier, and then the x in the base will stay inside the ln. Now I'm going to use implicit differentiation. On the left, y is a function of x, so I need to do the chain rule on the left. The derivative of the outside function is 1 over y, and the derivative of the inside function is y prime. Now in order to take the derivative on the right, I'm going to need to use the product rule. Let's take the derivative of the first term times the second plus the first term times the derivative of the second. And the final step is to solve for y prime. And don't forget about the final step. We know that this y is equal to x to the cosine of x power. That was our original function. So the final step is to write the y prime answer entirely as a function of x. And there we go, there's our solution. If we graph the function y is equal to x cosine of x, then the slopes of the tangent lines on that function are given by this expression. Similarly, if this were representing some sort of position function and and instead of x we had time, then the y prime would represent a velocity function. Algorithmic differentiation solves a problem for us, which is how do you take the derivative of a function that's neither a power nor an exponent? And logarithmic differentiation solves this problem for us. What often happens with new mathematical methods is that it will, one, solve an obvious problem for us that we have, something that we can't compute otherwise. But often there's other benefits to a new mathematical method, and that's what we're going to do next. Logarithmic differentiation can also be helpful if I have a function that's rather complicated and I could do the product rule or I could do quotient rule, but it might be very intensive to do so. So logarithmic differentiation, it makes somewhat complicated differentiations actually a little bit simpler because logarithms have certain algebraic rules that will help us to simplify. So let's do an example like that. In order to take the derivative of this rather complicated function, I would start with with the quotient rule. When I take the derivative of the top, I'll need to use the product rule. When I take the derivative of the bottom, I'll also need to use the product rule. Within the quotient rule, we have two product rules. Within each one of those product rules, we further have a chain rule in each of the pieces. You can do the problem that way, assuming you can keep all the algebra in order, but there's an easier way. Logarithmic differentiation will make this problem a bit easier. So let's start by taking the ln of both sides. Step two is to use the properties of log in order to simplify the expression. ln of a over b is equal to ln of a minus ln of b. Let's start with that to simplify the right hand side. ln of the numerator minus ln of the denominator. Now we can further simplify these lns because this in here is a product and that's a product as well over in the second term. Now let's use the property of logarithms that says ln of a times b is equal to ln of a plus ln of b. My a is secant to the fifth power and my b is x to the fourth to the one half power. We'll do the same thing in the second term. Don't forget about this minus sign. This minus sign is subtracting the whole ln ln term. So anything that I replace this ln term by, that minus sign should distribute through the whole expression. So here's that minus sign. Now we're going to use another property of logarithm. ln of a to the b power is equal to b times ln of a. Notice that each one of these has that format. It's like my 1 is missing in here, but this is x to the 4 plus 1 to the 1 half power. So simplifying more, 5 ln of secant plus a half ln of x to the 4th plus 1 minus x squared ln of e, and I'm going to distribute the minus sign as I go, so I'll have minus 80 ln of 3x to 6 plus 8. Don't forget that ln of e is equal to 1. So this x squared here is multiplied times 1. Notice that so far we've only done two things. We took the ln of both sides and we used properties of logarithm to simplify. No derivatives 
have yet been taken. Up to this point, we've just been doing algebra. Now let's take the derivative. As you can see, this expression is a lot easier to take the derivative of in comparison to our original expression. So now let's do our implicit differentiation. I get one over y, y prime on the left. Taking the derivative of ln of secant, I get one over secant times the derivative of secant is secant times tangent. The derivative of the next term we have a half that's in the problem, the multiplier in front. Doing the derivative of the outside function gives 1 over x to the fourth plus 1 times the derivative of the inside function. The next piece gives minus 2x. And the final piece is the 80. Derivative of the outside function is 1 over 3x to the sixth plus 8. And then times the derivative of the inside function would be 18x to the fifth. That derivative was not so bad. Let's do some simplifying so our answer can look a little cleaner. Secants cancel. 2 and 4 will leave a 2 upstairs, and 80 times 18 is 1440. Don't forget that y is equal to this expression. So down below, I almost have my answer. I can multiply by y on both sides in order to solve for y prime, and I need to finish by writing my final answer back in terms of only x's. So I'll have this expression on the right-hand side times y, where y is equal to the original function. So here I've multiplied times y. Now I've replaced y with the original expression. And finally, I have my final answer. On the graph of this original function, the slopes of the tangent lines are given by this final expression that we've got at the bottom here. Using logarithmic differentiation was easier than using the quotient rule, which has a product rule in inside it and also chain rules inside it. You should be able to look at an expression and decide whether logarithmic differentiation is going to make the problem easier if the properties of logarithm will allow you to separate the products and the quotients then yes logarithmic differentiation is a good idea finally don't forget to put your final answer completely in terms of x if you're given a function of x your final answer should be in terms of x. So there you go, that's logarithmic differentiation. So we'll do more of logarithmic differentiation in class. We'll see you then.